Oh, hi guys, Mr. Rigo here. So, um, video two of our series beat the test uh, review for the EOC exam geometry and of course exam. If you didn't watch uh, video one, please uh, go to my channel and check number one. Uh, right now, we're finishing question number three. Okay, uh, last part we did was part C. We ended up saying that uh, point C, which is three comma two, when we did the rotation, we got two comma negative three. That's my P prime. So two, one, two, three. So that's P prime, okay? Which is two comma negative three. Now, the whole idea is to concentrate on one point, okay? So that point I rotate, I got here. My last step is right now direct description of the translation that will complete the transformation. Now I gotta move this point all the way up to here. So translation. Uh, right now I rotate it and my 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 quadrilateral should be in this position. My point P is right there. I gotta move it over here. So that means I gotta go down one, two, three, four. I go four down, which means it's gonna be negative because the movement is going down. And I'm gonna go one, two to the right. And that's gonna be positive two. So if I'm moving down, this is vertical movement, which is Y movement. And if I'm moving to the right, that's positive movement, but in the X, I'm doing horizontally. To the right is positive, to the left is negative. Y, I'm going down is negative, I'm going up is, is positive, okay? So let's finish the transformation. So I have X comma Y is gonna turn into X plus two comma and Y minus four. And that's the end of problem number three. Now let's work on question number four. It says, Select all the statements that correctly describe the effect of the rule x comma y is going to turn into x plus 3 y minus 4. So like, like problem number 3, okay, what did this mean? This is a translation, okay? That means my x is going to move 3 to the right and my y is going to be moved 4 down. So let's pretend that my point is here. It says 1, 2, 3 to the right and then 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the translation that we're moving. That's what they suggest on triangle ABC. So let's see the, the choices. I said, I, again, all the statements, so it's more than one. The new triangle will be three units above. Now, remember, I'm going four down, and I'm going three to the right. So the new triangle will be three units above. Nope, that's wrong. The new triangle will be un four units below. Yes, that's right. The new triangle will be four units to the left, no, we're going three to the right. The new triangle will be three units to the right. That is right. Uh, only the shape of triangle ABC will be preserved after the transformation. Hold on, uh, uh, let's see. Only the shape and size of the of triangle ABC will be preserved after the transformation. Let's look at the next, last one. The shape, size, and orientation of triangle ABC will be preserved after the transformation. Okay, guys, so here we go. These three statements on the end, they're talking about the translation. So basically, if I'm moving this triangle, the triangle will not change. This is a translation, which means the triangle, if it's here, and then I move it to the right, the triangle is not going to change. And then if I move it down, then my triangle will not change. Translation, the orientation is not changing, the size is not changing, the shape is not changing. So I gotta go to the end, the shape, size and orientation is not changing. The only time my size change is when I have a dilation. When my orientation changes is when I have a rotation, which I'm not having that. So let's read that again. Shape, size and orientation of the triangle will be preserved after the transformation. All this because I'm doing a translation. So this will be my last answer for question number four. Let's get to question number five. So this question, uh, yeah, I think my picture cut the, the statement. So the first statement they're saying is, the only information that is given is they're saying PQ is parallel to RS. That's the only thing they're telling me. PQ parallel to RS. Okay, so what happens? Uh, let's solve, let's see the questions. Solve for A and justify your answer. Determine angle ABQ, determine angle BCR. So let's start from A. A, solve for A and justify your answer. First things first, they're saying that this line PQ is parallel, so I'm gonna put a little arrow right there, is parallel to line 
QS. Those two lines are parallel, that's why I'm putting those arrows. If those two lines are parallel, then what happens is the following. These two angles, the 2A minus 9 is this angle, and the 5A plus 14, which is this angle, those are called same sine tibia angles, and they're supplementary. I'm going to put a, a, a link to uh, another video that I've explained this completely. Again, 2A minus 9, this angle, which is angle QBC, and angle 5A plus 14, which is angle SCB, they're supplementary because they're called same sign interior. Supplementary means that when I add the two angles, this is my first angle, 2A minus 9, I add it to the second angle, which is 5A plus 14. I'm sorry, by the way, this is an A. That's going to be equal to 180 because they're supplementary angles. So what I need to do is I need to uh, solve for A. 2A plus 5A is going to give me 7A. Negative 9 plus 14 is positive 5. And I have equal to 180. Again, I'm solving the equation. Minus 5 minus 5. I'm going to cancel the 5 first. Then I have 7A equals to 175. My last step is to get rid of the whatever is with the A divided by 7 divided by 7. The value of A is equal to 25. And if they ask you to justify your answer, this can be the justification. Or in the beginning, you have to say that those angles are same sign tibia, therefore they're supplementary. I believe that will be the explanation enough uh, for part A. We have A done. B, determine measure of angle ABQ. So let's see where's angle ABQ. Let's get a different color, ABQ. Let's get blue. Here we go. ABQ. So ABQ is this angle on the top. All right, let's keep talking. So that angle and 5A plus 14, they're called corresponding angles. All right, so because these two lines are parallel, so uh, whatever measure is this angle, it will be equal, they're congruent to that angle. That's one way of doing it. So let's see how much is this angle. Let's replace the A into 5A plus 14. So 5A plus 14 is equal, remember, the 5 times A, A is 25 plus 14. Again, I'm replacing in here to find out how much is this angle. 5 plus 14 is 125 plus 14, that's one. 39 I believe okay so my angle is 139 so this angle is 139 degrees but these two angles are corresponding angles are then congruent therefore this angle is also 139 there's another way how to do it and it's the following this is a straight line therefore the 139 and the 2i minus 9, they're called linear pair. And they're supplementary angles as well. Okay? So I was able also to just find how much is the value of 2i minus 9. Let's do it in the bottom. 2a minus 9. Okay. Uh, the a is equal to 25. 29 times 2 is 50. 50 minus 9 is 41. So I could also did this angle here, it was 41, okay? And I can say, all right, hold on. Uh, the angle 2A minus 9, which is QBC, and angle ABQ are supplementary. Therefore, the sum has to be equal to 180. If you notice right now, 41 and 139 is equal to 180. So I'm verifying my information. So angle ABQ, ABQ is 139 degrees. Okay, last but not least, BCR, BCR. So let me erase a little bit over here so we can clear some space. Okay, BCR, BCR. Let me write this again. This is 139 degrees. All right, let me go back to red. And the question is BCR. All right, BCR. So they're asking me for this angle. Okay, that's fine. Remember, if I have a straight line, then these two angles are supplementary angle because that's called a linear pair. So if this angle on the right side is 139, then to find the other angle, I just said 180 
which is the sum of the two minus the one that I know. That's going to give me the measure of the angle that I don't know, which is 41. 41 plus 139 is 180. One more way. Look at this. Remember that 2a minus 9? This angle? It was 41 degrees. Guess what? That angle QB, this was C, right? And R, C, B, they're called alternate interior angles. So these two are alternate interior angles and they're congruent. And if you notice, 41, 41. So there's another way how to double check my answers. Therefore, my last answer is 41 degrees. Again, I have a couple more videos. I will link them on the description and explain all these angles, supplementary, uh, all that, vertical angles, the whole thing. Let's get to the next problem. Question number six. Now, question number six, they're telling me, consider the image in quadrant one and the pre-image in quadrant two. Okay, so this is Q1 and this is Q2. Quadrant one, quadrant two, they didn't finish the, the, the whole thing. They're asking you for measure angle four and measure angle E. They'll give me those two angles. And the questions are angle one, angle C. All right, so let's start. When I have a, they're saying image and pre-image. Image, quadrant one. Image, if this is the image, then that means this is the transform, the transform already. The pre-image is the original. So that means this could be a reflection. I'm on the y-axis. When I have a reflection, the only thing that changes is the orientation but the size and the shape of the figure does not change. So the only thing that it changes is the orientation. Therefore, these angles does not change. They, they, they don't change at all. So I can say that angle four, all right, let me see angle four. So this angle four, the reflection is angle H. So those two are congruent. H and four are congruent. What else? E, E, let's see E. So this angle E on the top is congruent to angle one. All right, so you notice that those are the ones that ask me. They're equal. So let's see. They give me angle 4 and angle E. Angle 4 is 5x plus 14, but angle H is the same thing. Okay, so this is the same as measure of angle H. So I can say that this is 5x plus 14. All right. Then what? They give me angle E. E is on the top. They're saying that that angle is 7x minus 2. 7x minus 2. Okay, so I have, by the way, this is 14, right? Okay, so I have two angles, but I have a variable. That means I have to work with an equation. So how, what kind of angles are these two? These two angles are called same side exterior angle and they're supplementary angles. So supplementary angles means I'm going to add the two angles, 7x minus 2, plus... 5x plus 14 equals to 180. They're supplementary. So that means I have to solve for x. 7 plus 5 is 12x. Negative 2 and 14 is 12 equals 180. Minus 12. I got to solve for x. And then I have 12x equals to 168. My last step is to divide it by... 12 divided by 12 and I believe my x is equal to 14 okay so I have the value of x but they didn't ask me for x they asked me for angle 1 and angle c okay angle 1 is this but I said that angle 1 is the same as angle e so this is the same as measure of angle 1 let's plug it in I had the 14 already so let's plug in the 7 times 14 minus 2 okay 7 times 14 is going to give me 98 minus 2 and it's going to give me 96 so angle e which is angle 1 is 96 the last question is angle c but angle c is vertical angle to angle h so i just need to find the angle h let's plug it in 5 times 14 plus 14 and 5 times 14 is going to give me 70 plus 14. That's going to give me 84. Again, angle H, which is, is vertical angle to angle C, they're the same. They're congruent. And my angle is 84. And that's the last thing. Okay? Please stay tuned for the next 
video, we're going to finish beat the test.